Welcome back. Today we'll be jumping into the next lesson on building our platformer game. So to get started, we need to create three new sprites today. I have already created my three sprites, one called SPR underscore player air, another SPR player idle, and another SPR player run. I've explained more in class on what exactly has to be done, but just make sure that you have these three sprites with these names so that way you can follow along. We no longer need SPR underscore player, our little uh, rectangle, so we can remove this one from our program. With this removed, let's go back into our player object. So make sure you select the new sprite, in this case, player under or, uh, SPR player idle, so that way we now have our little animation of our sprites standing there, bouncing up and down. We can run this just so we can see that it is working. With that, our overall goal for the day is to make sure we have full animations in place. We want to be able to see our player not only standing there, but also moving around, jumping, and uh, falling. With that, we see the animation is in fact working. Let's go ahead and jump into our room to address a couple of things. First off, we see that uh, in my case, my player object is stuck in the wall. So I need to move him outside to address that issue. Next, because of the background color is kind of dark, I need to go ahead and fix this. I'm gonna set it to a very light gray. That looks good. Then uh, as we had noted earlier, Whenever I had moved around my object, uh, it is behind my wall. I want the player object to be in front of the wall, so I'm actually gonna build out a separate layer. So let's go ahead and create a brand new layer. This layer, let me rename this. This is simply gonna be the player layer. So I'm gonna represent this as player, and over here, I'm gonna rename this to simply be walls. I'm gonna delete my player from the walls layer and add it into the player layer. And so now we can see our player is on top of our objects so that everything will be good to go. Now that we've updated the rooms, our room is set, our animation uh, should be visible. We're not gonna have a collision issue at the start. So let's go ahead and jump into our object itself. There's one thing that we need to add to our create event. It's a brand new variable. This has to do with how I'm messing around with the animations. I'm going to create a brand new variable s sprite idle speed. This will represent the speed that I want my animation to be going at. Actually, this will address more than just the idle uh, sprite animation speed. Uh, this I'm gonna to set to 0 0.6. And so this will just mean that I want it to go at 60% of the speed that it normally would be operating at. Jumping into our step event, uh, let me clarify, animation speed for frames. Jumping into our step event. We currently, let me maximize this so that way we can see everything that we need. Inside here, we have gotten most of our setup uh, prepared for all of our movements. We just don't have the animations that address all of this. The first thing I wanna do before I jump into that, since it is relevant whether or not we are on the ground, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable to keep track of that bit of information. So I'm going to pull out our place meeting conditional statement here and assign it to a new variable uh, on floor. If this is true, then we're going to want to do something with it. And so that updates it here. The logic behind why I'm doing this is because we are going to need this conditional later on. Collision checks are very expensive on the game itself. So if we check it here, it'll make sure that we don't have to do another check later on because instead of doing a full check, we're simply checking the result 
of this variable. This ensures that everything is good to go and we won't have any problems. Now, moving down after the creation of this variable, let's take a look at our animation portion. And so I'm gonna make a new section, I'm gonna call it animation. Inside here, this will address everything that we need to do. First, if our character is not on the floor, then we need to go ahead and do something about that. If our character is not on the floor, then I'm gonna go ahead and... So the first thing we need to address is our sprite. What sprite are we going to be using? Sprite underscore index swaps out our sprite from the idle sprite to now our player sprite uh, for our jumping portion. So that's SPR underscore player air. This represents us jumping either the first frame or the second frame. And so now that we have that, we need to figure out what we're gonna do because I did this sprite slightly differently. Rather than just the first portion addressing whether or not we are uh, doing a full animation, here I actually just had two frames, one for me being in the air, one for me landing. So the first one addressed me just jumping, the second one was the landing one, and with uh, any type of container, generally the indices start at zero. So for us to make sure that this is set up, we need to first not move through the images. So image underscore speed is set to zero. This will make sure that the animation does not actually run. Then down below, I'm gonna add, check if the sign of our vertical movement speed is positive greater than zero. That tells us, okay, we are in fact going down. So remember, positive zero is in the downward direction. Uh, image underscore index is going to be equal to one. This tells us, okay, I'm going to do the falling frame showing it because our image speed is zero. No movement is actually occurring. Our next check is just the else statement. If we're not moving down, then that means we are moving up. That tells us we can have image underscore index set to zero. With this set to zero, this will ensure that our image will properly update with the jump portion of it. If we take a look over at my sprites, we can actually see what we've got. The first frame is me jumping. The second frame is me landing. Now that we've got that correctly implemented, going back to our code and the step event, we have this operational to address the jumping portion. But this only checks if we're not on the floor. Since we're in the air, this is correct. Our next check is an else. If we're not on the floor, uh, we're in the air. Otherwise, we are in fact on the floor, so we need to do some operation to address this. I'm gonna reset my image speed to be what I had created before that variable, uh, sprite animation speed. That is locked down and good to go. This will address all of our speeds uh, for how quickly it wants to animate through our frames. Normally it will try to do it at whatever the frame rate of the game is, 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second. Uh, I want this to in fact be 60% of that. So it slows it down just a bit for the purposes of uh, me having fewer frames compensated. Now that that is set, we need to figure out what are we doing? How are we moving or are we idling? So if our horizontal movement speed is equal to zero, well, we're not moving at all. So that tells us our sprite index is going to be equal to SPR underscore player idle. Now that that is set for us not moving, our other condition else will address us actually moving. So our sprite index is going to be set equal to SPR underscore player run. This will be the sprite animation for us moving through the area. Now that this is set, we have us addressing jumping, moving, 
and moving in the horizontal direction, or if we are not moving in the horizontal direction, which is represented by here setting equal to zero, then our player animation or our player sprite will be swapped to the idle sprite. Then last but not least is to address what direction are we looking at? Because right now, if I run the game, assuming everything is uh, coded correctly, this should tell us that our program, yeah, we were here, we see the idle animation. Our character is not doing anything particularly uh, interesting. But if I jump, we see we have the little jump animation correctly working. Our issue, however, comes with the movement. Our horizontal movement uh, is not being addressed like we'd want it to be. We're not changing directions. So let's go back in the code and figure out why we're not doing that. Well, that's actually checked right here. We need to add something to flip our sprite. If I'm jumping towards the left, I should be facing the left. So I'm going to update my horizontal uh, or update the code to check if my horizontal movement speed is not equal to zero. That means we're not moving at the moment. Then we need to do some activity. In this case, our image x scale. This determines the sizing of our image. In our case, it's going to be set equal to the sign of our horizontal movement speed. That way, if we're moving towards the negative x direction, it'll actually multiply it a negative value, so that way it addresses our movement towards the left. On the other hand, if we're moving towards positive right, it'll set it to a positive one, and that way we're simply keeping the standard image facing right. So this will address flipping our sprite. Now that we have this, whenever I run the program, we should now have a component uh, keeping an eye on that movement. And so now inside here, I'm idling, I'm jumping, I'm jumping this way, I jump that way. We see that I have now changed directions for that portion. And so recapping what we've gotten here, we have, and so now that we have these components in place, if we are jumping, uh, or not in the ground, then we address these operations. Otherwise, we handle either our idle and running animation, and this will flip it to compensate for movement. But while this addresses the code, we still have to do some tweaks on our program itself, uh, or the sprites more so. So if you move back over to sprite idle, this is the main sprite that we're gonna be using. I need to fix the collisions to properly address this. And so, I'm going to manually modify the collisions just to be on the edges of my shoes uh, and keep it relatively smaller. Uh, this should be good enough. Uh, that'll set it for this sprite. Uh, and then because we see we are different sizes on different components, uh, I'm going to manually update all of these uh, to address overall just roughly the same idea. However, notice in this part, I'm actually physically smaller. This is gonna cause issues with our ability to move left and right in the program. And so uh, that is why there is a setting inside of our object to modify how the collision works. Rather than matching the sprite, whatever sprite it might be, I'm going to set it to only use the idle sprite collision. This will lock it in place to this format. So that way, now whenever we run it, uh, as we shift between the falling and the jumping, there's no confusion over which sprite collision to use. And so we're able to uh, move around without any issue. And there you can see the little running animation that my character does. So now that that is complete, that wraps up everything we have to be concerned with for this challenge. And so if you have any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, that's all I've got. Uh, everyone have a good one, and I'll see you all next time.